Hey, it's Jason Eve here with Contrabass Conversations. We're continuing to mix up our format here today, bringing you a conversation with Eleanor Martindale about this amazing summer camp, the RCR Double Bass Camp in the south of France. This is going to be its second year. It's happening August 19th through 24th, 2019. You can find out info about this and the many, many, many dozens and dozens of other summer camps going on around the world at doublebassblog.org slash summer camps. We'll have a link to that in the show notes, and we will also have a link to the camp website, the Facebook page, a great YouTube video of two of the faculty. Speaking of faculty, we have Thomas Martin, past podcast guest, on the roster for 2019 for the RCR Double Bass Camp. Giuseppe Atore, who's the Principal bass of the La Scala Orchestra. We chat about him. Super interesting guy. Lauren Campe, who sounds like a fantastic young player. I haven't met her, but she sounds great. Uh, put a little bumper music of her playing along with Giuseppe. And then also Bernard Sal. And what a cool event. Really hope you enjoy this. Thank you to the sponsors who keep the lights on here at Contrabass Conversations. Thank you so much to Steve Swan, String Bass, Upton Bass, Diderio Strings, The Bass Violin Shop, Colstein Music, and A440 Violin Shop. You'll hear more from them in our longer episodes. But let's dig into this conversation with Eleanor Martindale about the RCR Double Bass Camp. So this is year two of the course, right? Was the first year last last summer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So we, so we launched it last summer. We kind of did a fairly fairly small course last summer just to see how it would go, see if it was going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had, I think, 14, 15 students. So it was fairly small, fairly intimate, but it worked really, really well. So we wanted to launch again this, well, not launch it, to run it again this year, um, hopefully with more students. Um, so to have a kind of greater uh, number of students enrolling, um, we've got pretty much the same stuff because it worked really well last year. Um, so we have Thomas Martin, who I'm guessing you've heard of. Of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> what double bass player hasn't heard of Thomas Martin, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so he's kind of like the, the, well, the, the kind of granddaddy of classical bass playing, right? He's played with every orchestra all over the world. He's he's just got so much experience and he's still playing. He's 73, 74, I don't remember. He had his birthday with us last summer when, when we had the summer course. I think he's 72. I don't remember exactly his age, but he's still playing. And yeah. still, you know, um, um, just, and just fantastic. So much advice to give to the students. He's, he's just great. So he's kind of like the... The, the older generation, if you like. Um, then we have Giuseppe Atori, who's the, the principal bass with La Scala, um, who is just fantastic. He's just got this great Italian attitude. Um, it's, you know, every, it doesn't do anything by house. He is, he is amazing. I saw him do a recital in Lucca, Italy this summer for the Ooh. European Bass Congress. Yeah, of course, it of course, it yeah. must have been, I don't know what it is, Celsius, but it was about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah. He just, I've never heard bass playing like that, so it's so yeah. cool that he's on yeah. board. He is, and he, he's just great. And he, again, in terms of like his teaching, he is just so, so incredible. I mean, he's in Italian, he talks with his hands, he, <laughs> it, he speaks English, he speaks French, he speaks Italian, he speaks everything. He's just... You know, and he is so open and so willing to listen to all the students, like whatever level they are. He's just fantastic. And he's, he, I mean, he just does everything with all his heart, everything. It just, he never plays anything by halves. And he, I mean, he's incredible. He arrived, I think last time he couldn't come for the whole course. He was there maybe a day late. So we had to change his, his lesson schedule. So we had all, you know, so all the students would have the right number of lessons with him, which meant he had a really heavy teaching schedule. Um, but he, he arrived. Um, from like, I think he came from Italy. So he drove, he drove all the way through France, arrived after like, I don't know, 12 hours driving or something. And he, he started teaching right away. Wow. Um, and then, and then started rehearsing and he was rehearsing. It was just before Luca. So he was rehearsing for his, his recital that he gave with us. He was rehearsing for Luca. He was giving lessons. He just doesn't stop. He arrives and he, he just does not stop. He's incredible. Yeah. Um, He's amazing. Um, and then, yeah, and uh, he, he's just, he's fantastic. Um, 
And then the third bass player is Lauren Compe. I don't know if you know her. Uh, um, t- yeah, tell me a bit about her. Younger player, right? She's, oh, she's incredible. Okay, so Lauren Compe, she is, let me get this right, I think she's 21, uh, maybe 22. We first met her, so I work with an orchestra here, which is how I kind of got involved with all of this, um, which is run by Ben Marcel, who is John Baptiste's father. Um, so that's kind of like my link into all of this, if you sure, like. Sure. Um, and she played, uh, so Bernard wrote, he's a composer as well, he wrote um, a piece for Double Bass and Orchestra, um, and he invited Lauren to come, to come and play it with us to, to do the premiere of this piece. And she was 17 at the time. Um, she had just won the, the prize in Amsterdam for the, the when they had the Bass Fest in Amsterdam. Um, so I guess this was like three, years, three, four years back. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so she was 17. She just won won the, the prize at Bass Fest the Bot- playing the Bozzini. Um And so Bana thought, well, why not? She's young. She's obviously really good. Um, so she, he invited her. She was just absolutely incredible. You know, 17 years old, hadn't finished high school yet. Um, and just kind of played. So she played the, the Bozzini Concerto number no. two and the piece that Bana wrote, which was about 20, 25 minutes long. So, you know, a substantial piece. Um, three concerts in a row, so dress rehearsal plus three concerts in a row of four different days, um, just not one note wrong, you know, <laughs> but just absolutely, just, you know, so we thought, wow, you know, she, she's quite special. Um, when Bama put her back into the train, so just before, she, she was going back to Paris after the concerts, and she said, oh, I'm um, auditioning for the um, Orchestre Philharmonique de Radio France tomorrow. Or the day after <laughs> Wow. 17 hasn't finished high school. She auditioned. She got co so um, co principal before finishing high school. What a player! That's amazing. <laughs> and she couldn't actually. So she had to wait a couple of months before she before she actually started because she was only 17, so she wasn't allowed the contract yet. Um, <laughs> so um, and and that same year she was accepted. Uh, so she was like finishing her masters. At, she still had like, I think one or two years to do before she finished her masters at um, the Conservatoire of Paris to finish her double bass studies. And that same year she was accepted to study violin at the Conservatoire of Paris. Wow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a talent. <laughs> so this is, this is Lauren, okay? So Lauren, she's, she's just, she's kind of like from another planet. You know, that kind of, so she plays the violin pretty much as well as she plays a double bass. Um, you know, she's currently finishing her master's in violin studies at the Conservatoire of Paris, um, whilst being co-solist at the Philharmonie. Uh, and um, so she, she's just, she really is on another planet. So she's this young generation coming up through who is just absolutely you know, taking the whole bass to another level. And, I, and, you know, I think you're kind of part of this generation as well, just this perfection in sound, making sure all the notes are just perfectly in tune, which up until now really hasn't been always the case with double bass. You know, even the best players, there's always been some imperfections. It's, you know, I mean, this is something that Bernard's always said, double bass is like, you know, 100 years behind the violin in terms of technique and, you know. Um, and we're getting to the stage where there are these young virtuoso players coming up who are just, Absolutely stunning. So Lorenz, that generation of these. So we've got three generations of players, which is just fantastic. So you've got Tom, who's kind of like, you know, was the first generation, I guess, of virtuoso players, um, like post-war. Um, um, then you've got Giuseppe, who's like absolutely at the top of his game at the moment, just this incredible double bass player. Um, got the experience, got that. He's just absolutely fantastic. And then Lorraine coming up through. Um I mean, for me, the highlight of the of the summer school last year was when Lorraine and Giuseppe played the Passione Amorosa. Um, yeah, I was just I was just listening to that actually before we were yeah. chatting. I'll make sure to put a little bit of, of that audio on this just so people can hear it because it's, it's really yeah. it's really incredible. I mean, I think for me, it's kind of like the it's. I really think that could be a kind of reference version of that piece. But I mean, there are so many people who have played it. It's a, but it really was, I mean, being there, listening to them, it's just these two people who are playing, just absolutely playing the heart and soul. And it's just, I mean, it's not absolutely perfect, but it's not a studio recording. You know, it's, it's a live concert. Um, it's and exciting. in terms of the musicality, oh, yeah. it's really exciting. Yeah. It's really exciting to listen to. And the musicality is just like, and I love it because, like, I mean, there's one, I think, in, in Giuseppe's first, passage he kind of just there's one note that's slightly off and the second passage you can just see him going this one's gonna be perfect <laughs> <laughs> and you there's a sort of like there's this sort of competition between the two but also a complicity of their playing together and they just musically they work well together 
it's, um, it's part of the fun of that piece too. It's such a brilliant yeah, piece. For, yeah. we, we just did that here in San Francisco for a, a base event. We have principal base of the San Francisco <laughs> Symphony and the the associate principal, the second chair. And and when the harmonics get going, the dum bum 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 yeah, bum, oh, yeah. bum the, It was kind of like a hazing moment. The the principal he yeah. just let the let the assistant principal repeat it seven yeah. eight times. He actually got a bottle of water, opened it up, <laughs> was drinking. So yeah. that piece is perfect yeah. for that competitive. Yeah. Piece. <laughs> it, it is it's, it's great and they just it, i mean it was just it was just such a great moment it really was um and so it's fantastic that the three of them are coming back again this year that they agreed, agreed to come back because you know last year was kind of, you know it was the first year we're launching it see how it worked and the three of them just got on so well together it really worked as a team and they all said you know if this works for next year we want to come back so you know we said okay great they helped us out for the first year so for the second year hopefully this is really gonna work as a a great international course i mean we had we had students we did have students i mean there, there weren't that many but they were from all over the world i mean we had a couple from china we had a canadian who came across um and then from europe there were students from france of course and um, portugal from spain uh from the uk so it it's Although there weren't that many, it was still it still had that nice kind of international feel from it for, of it with people from all over the place meeting up, um, exchanging ideas, um, mostly French bow but some German bow as well. So it, you know, just it real it was just a great exchange. Really, really, uh, everyone got on so well together. Yeah. <laughs> you, you never know, and you never know with the students, and particularly when there's a small number of students, if you've got one who just doesn't quite fit in or, or something like that, it can kind of throw the whole thing off. Um, but that didn't happen, which was lovely. Um, so, you know, it was just a really, really great atmosphere. And then, you know, so that was, we have the two different, um, so I was, sorry, I had the French word and we had the two different, um, uh, levels. Yeah. Like a group A so and a group a. B, right? Yeah. 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 So group A for the, I mean, the only thing that changes is the individual lessons. Okay. For group A and B. So group A have the individual lessons. They've got the the um, the, the kind of star teachers, if you like. So Lauren, Giuseppe, and Thomas mm -hmm. um, doing the individual lessons. Um, and for group B, um, so it's Bernard Marcel and Jean-Baptiste Salle, um, uh, who you know, and then Emmanuel Massat, who is the teacher in Perpignan, mm -hmm. um, double bass teacher in Perpignan. So it's basically um, group B is for kind of beginners all the way up to intermediate, I would say, intermediate level. And then as soon as you're getting into a kind of advanced level um then you know music school professional training um you're probably looking at doing group a and and you've got i i and you've got uh like a mini bass offering too i saw yeah. right so is that yeah. for younger yeah. players tell me about that yeah well the mini bass offering um if we, uh, if we get enough mini bit i mean we we want at least kind of five to get a group together yeah. um yeah. so there will be group lessons just in the mornings mm -hmm. um um, so it'll be Jean Baptiste and Emmanuel who'll be running these. So group sessions, two hours less, two hour lessons in the mornings, to get a little mini bass orchestra going. So they will be learning one piece or two pieces throughout the week um, that they would then play at the concert at the end. Um, um, so yeah, a little a little mini bass orchestra um, because I mean I guess with a with the double bass it's sometimes because it's one of the rarer instruments kids don't always get a chance to play together. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, or they're just kind of put at the back of the orchestra and expected to kind of follow apart. But they don't always get the, the sense of ensemble, ensemble that other instruments get. Um, so it's kind of nice when you get a whole group of kids together because they, they just love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's so it's so great. It's so great to see that getting going early on too. Yeah. And you know, it's so yeah. it's so cool. The hardest year to do any festival is year one, right? Because you don't yeah. know, like, will yeah. will they come? It's like if yeah. we build it, yeah. will they come? Yeah. And so they yeah. did come. And and I yeah. think what what you know, just like I, I'll link up to the website and everything. But boy, it, it's in the south of France, right? Yeah. So like, okay, it, it, it's in a castle in the south of France. <laughs> okay, who wouldn't want to go to a castle in the south of France and work with these multi generations yeah. of players? And yeah. it's just yeah. what what a cool event it really is and, and what's i mean what we try to do as well um is have at least two afternoons where they don't have um any base activities where we can kind of take them to the beach or take them to visit something because there's so many cool things to see around there, right here as well um, um so last year they went to Cuyo, which is this fantastic um it's not really a resort it's like a historical beach town i guess so there's like a, a castle and a church that are pretty much right on the beach which is really cool <laughs> Um, um, so, you know, we took them there, we took them to, um, in the evenings, we took some of the older students to, uh, there's like a music festival on Thursday evenings in Perpignan, so they went to see some of the concerts there. So there's a kind of, you know, um, social aspect to it as well. 
um, which is which is really cool, um, particularly because these are people from, coming from all over the world, um, just you know meeting up, um, speaking all different languages. I mean, mostly English and French, quite a lot of Spanish as well, actually, um, um, and kind of communicating through music, <laughs> which is. Just so fantastic! It's a it's a beautiful thing. That's so that's yeah. so cool. Well, I, I will link up. I will link up to the website. I know you've got a Facebook yeah. page, and yeah. and I'll, I'll link up to that awesome fantastic. video of of uh, passing on Amorosa. And one oh. of these years, hopefully, I can make it out. I know that you've also got a, like an, an uh, you, it's a, a jazz players, classical players, amateurs yeah. are welcome too, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, the, the we we're trying to get it like as open as possible. Um, with a uh, we hopefully are going to be able to do a kind of jazz afternoon this time. Um, and in the future, we would like to have a, a jazz part of the music school. Um, it's a little bit more complicated to do because, of course, with jazz, you need, you're need you probably going to need a drummer and a, a pianist as well. We do have a pianist, actually, a um, classical pianist who um, accompanies the whole summer school. Um, I don't know. Do you know Marina? Marina Pagowski? Yes. Yes, yeah. I, I know. I don't. I don't think we've met in person, but I know the name. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, she actually she lives in Los Angeles now, so she's you know not too far from you. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, she's based in Los Angeles at the moment. Um, doing mostly actually because she does jazz too, and she's doing mostly jazz jazz singing and jazz accompaniment in in Los Angeles at the moment. Um, but she's um, like all the classical players just love her as an accompanist. <laughs> So we've got her coming along, and she's there for the whole for the whole week. Um, and the students can enroll with her for an hour or half an hour, how, however long they want to practice playing, playing their repertoire with piano. Um, and she's great with every level as well because you get the little kids going in with their you know their first piece that they want to practice with her, and she's she's great, and she'll like play the melody line with them and make sure they know where they're going and what they're doing, and then she'll do like Passione Amoroso with Giuseppe and Lauren. So. <laughs> It's just a really nice. It's it's great for the younger kids to be able to see those kind of players because they're not necessarily aware of how incredible they are. It's all about that. I remember when I was 15 years old, I went to the Jeff Bradditch masterclass. Oh, yeah. It's like my eyes were opened, you know, yeah. and 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 that yeah. started to structure kind of like the way you've got it uh, structured yeah. now with the A group and the B group yeah. and the yeah. and and yeah. all are welcome. I remember seeing an amateur play next to like somebody who already had a yeah. symphony job, and so it's, it's really yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's the idea as well to have no kind of limits. I mean, people can choose either A or B. We had one like we had somebody who was. Not a beginner, but had only been playing for a few years, but who really wanted to have lessons with Lauren, so she she enrolled in the A course, um, and you know, that, and that's absolutely fine. You know, it's it's her choice to do that, and that's that's great. Um, and for the group sessions, everyone's together, so you get the, the the younger players with the you know people who are preparing for symphony auditions, and um, it's just fantastic. It really is a great great atmosphere, great ambience, um, and hopefully we'll be able to recreate it this year. Um, that's the idea. I'm, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure you will. I'm sure that won't be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've got any other questions, like just um, don't hesitate to send me an email, or you know, we can we can have another chat at any point if you if you want to. Um, if you need any details or anything like that, just you know, drop me a line. Well, people love hearing about how you know just just the evolution of these things. It sounds super yeah. exciting. Who yeah. wouldn't want to be in the south of France in a castle working with well, this great crew exactly. of people? And yeah. <laughs> I'm not even a double lace pair, and I want to be that. <laughs> <laughs> That's saying something, yeah. <laughs> that is saying something. <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor. So great to chat with you. And folks, links in the show notes to the camp, the Facebook page, the track you're just hearing. Uh, what a cool <laughs> camp. So great to see more events like this popping up all over the world. And if you are going to be at a base event, uh, take some photos, share them with us. Everybody would appreciate it. Eleanor and the whole team uh, would appreciate it. I'd appreciate it. The base community would appreciate it. And if you're going to be at the International Society of Bases Convention this coming summer, 2019, at Indiana University, I'd love to meet you in person. Come up and say hi. I've been meaning for years to do some sort of meetup. I've, I've 
been just my bandwidth has been <laughs> not great these days. So I've been trying to find some time to think about how that would all look. But hopefully we'll do something like that around ISB 2019 and going forward. Contrabase Conversations is produced by Michael Cooper, Steve Hinchy, Trevor Jones, and Mitch Mooring. Mitch is doing great work on bases, building bases, uh, setup, all sorts of things, you name it, just east of Dallas. MitchMooring.com will get you to his site. Super great guy. And Krista Copper, thank you so much for going through and cataloging everything we talk about in these conversations. We can go and do best of episodes, highlights, uh, future projects. It's just so valuable. I'm your host, Jason Heath, and we will see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum.